Hey guys and welcome back. So in the last lecture we made an attempt at face detection in phase 1 of the Edith Glass prototype. So essentially we use Unity with OpenCV to perform AI face detection using a ResNet CNN. In this video we are going to build on top of that prototype and upgrade it with facial recognition. So as you can see from the demo, after training the model, we are able to recognize the faces of three people where we then instantiate a graphical UI for each of the person's identity. And this allows us to get close to Spider-Man Edith's glasses functionality that you saw in the movie. Okay, so let's get right into it and roll intro. Okay, so this free YouTube series is just a small part of the full course. Some parts of the project development will only be available on my course called Ultimate AI CV Practitioners Pro, which is the complete training that teaches you everything you need to know to be a pro AI developer in computer vision. So this includes object detection, object segmentation, pose estimation, as well as Android AI development. So there will be a link in the description down below where you can enroll directly into the course. Or if you want to learn more about AI in computer vision, then there'll also be a link to a free webinar explaining my top 10 tips to becoming a pro AI practitioner. Okay, so let's get started with project Edith phase 2. So first up, we're going to continue from our previous project that we did in the last video. We'll need a few packages before we can put things together. Let's first go over to the Unity Asset Store and download the asset called Face Recognition by Inox Software. So just be aware that this package requires OpenCV for Unity, which is a paid asset. And it's the same one that we used in the previous video. So if you bought it then, then you won't have to worry. The original source code can be found at these links. The spatial recognition plugin is free to use and import. Since I already have it imported, it won't allow me to import. For you, just click import. And then you'll see a folder called Real-Time Face Recognition Example. There is a collection and facial recognition. Go over here to this folder called Webcam Texture Recognition Example and open up the scene. And this is the one that we'll use as the base of our code. It is ready to test right out of the box. So click play and let's briefly go through how it works. You can test it out on your own face. I've printed out some pictures of the legendary Tony Stark and Black Widow. To add images to the dataset for training, click Add Person and scan the image at different distances, rotations, and angles. This is just to collect as many samples as possible. Once we're done with Tony, let's move over to Natasha Romanoff. Scan as many samples as you can, and once you're done, click anywhere on the image to train the network. Click save and you should have your dataset stored in a .yml file. Now this repo does not work too well with printed images. It performs better with real faces. So also if you're having a really hard time recognizing people, you can change the threshold of the detector over here from 0.75 to 0.85. If you want to add more image samples to the identity, you can simply click on the face and it will automatically scan in more for the dataset. You can see that it works much better after collecting more images. You can also test out the algorithm type between icon faces and fissure faces. I'm not going to delve in too much on these two models as there are a lot of information that you'll find on Google. Right now, we'll focus on the practical implementation. GitHub repo. So the code that we'll be using is an adaptation of the original code where I've hacked it to incorporate the HUD GUI that we shall implement. You'll find this on github.com forward slash rangegt09 forward slash project edith. Click here to clone or download the repo. In the zip file, we are looking for the readme text over here. And there will be a download link to the Unity asset that I've created. It was too big to store on GitHub, hence I stored it on a cloud platform. There is a C Sharp script over here, and we shall use this in just a moment. Another Unity asset that I've used 
which is optional, is the RZFX HUD shade effect. It just gives your app the extra punch for this futuristic HUD look. In my video, I've added a few elemental prefabs into the mix for the GUI and normal camera view. It costs $25, so buy it if you really want to. Like I said, it's optional. Once downloaded, click import and then import again. GUI animation 1, After Effects. While that is importing, let's go over here to YouTube and search for this guy's channel called Film Learning. We are essentially going to use this HUD effect that he made from the Spider-Man movie in After Effects. It's filmlearning.com forward slash downloads. Now this step is optional. If you do not have After Effects, don't worry. You can still follow along using the HUD asset from EXCELSIOR. And this is the same one that we used in the last lecture. Or you can use the Unity asset that I've created. In any case, I'm going to show you how I created the GUI HUD for each of the people that I want to identify right now in After Effects to get as close to the Spider-Man Edith prototype as possible. Go down to his description and click on the download link. From his page, Film Learning Download Packs, click on the Edith Glasses Effect Tutorial and the file should download automatically. Once you unzip it, you can open up the respective file versions corresponding to your After Effects version that you're running. Okay, so now that you are in After Effects, you can become familiar with the files, but basically you want to open up the sequence called ID Final. When it renders, you can see the VFX animation for the ID HUD. This file was meant for film instead of augmented reality, so there's layers that you can switch off and on. Now to customize this for our own use. Click on first ID Render. Then on ID Inset, and here you'll find the photo and name that we can replace with our own. First click on Photo. You can get a picture of you or someone you know. I've got a picture of Tony Stark, which I can drag into After Effects and replace my own handsome picture. Just resize quickly. And now we just need to change the name. Click on name. We're going to type in Tony Stark and scale it so that it looks right. Okay, cool. Now it's done and we can render it out to an image sequence. Go to file, export, add to render queue, where it says output module. We're going to change this output format to BNG sequence and also make sure to set the channel to RGB plus alpha. Otherwise, you're not going to get the transparent layer. Also, let's resize so we don't bomb out Unity. We'll change it to 720p. Select the folder to save it and rename it according to the identity that you are creating. We'll create a folder for Tony. render and now we wait. Back in Unity, while it's rendering, we can replace our webcam texture example script with the one we've downloaded from GitHub. Open it up in Visual Studio and simply copy and paste the script. Let's briefly look at the modifications that I've made. Script coding. Over here we have the array of GUI IDs, which is the prefab ID that we're currently baking in After Effects. This sphere is used for reference between the CV space and Unity world space. It took some time to calibrate these spheres to be just right. And then we have C underscore ID, which is the temporary variable to store the recognized face index. Moving down, we have a case statement that manages three faces or IDs. What happens here is that the sphere moves to the place where the faces was detected and then gets the HUD GUI prefabs to move smoothly to that location of the spheres. The same happens here with scale. Moving down again, this is the if statement that temporarily shows the ID 
so we don't get a null reference should the value show as unknown. So from start, we set active the GUI ID prefabs as false, but when detected, it is to set active and the animation starts along with it. And then we have another case statement, which is where I did the calibration between OpenCV space and Unity space. There's probably a much better way to do this mathematically, but I just performed an empirical calibration right over here. You can play around with these values should you wish to get it just right. I then use the output from the detected face called facecorrect.x, which comes from right over here. And this equation gets me the position of the face or eyes relative to world coordinates. And that's about it. Let's save and let Unity front end inspector refresh. For face recognition to work, we need at least two faces. So under GUI ID and sphere arrays, we'll type in two. Three will work as well. GUI animation part two, import into Unity. Okay, so once After Effects render has completed, we can head over to this folder and you can save it here. Copy all these images back into Unity. Create a folder first and then paste it right over here. So once we have the images, to convert them into an animation, we first need to convert it into a sprite texture. We do this by selecting all the images and where it says texture type, click sprite 2D. Under compression, we want the best quality possible, so click high quality and click apply so that they all turn into sprites. Now to turn them into an animation, it's really simple. Just select all the images or image sprites and drag them into the scene. We'll call this one Tony underscore ID animation. You will see it right over here. Also make sure that your animation is in front of the canvas so it doesn't get blocked. Facial recognition. So now that you know how to create an animation from After Effects, you can now spice it up with some heads up display or HUD effects from RZFX. Or you can use the ID GUI that I've created. Head over to the readme and download the file in the link. This Unity asset is called Identity UI Unity Package, which contains my pre-made set of GUI IDs to help save you time with this tutorial. Import it into Unity by dragging and dropping. Click Import and get a cup of coffee or celery juice depending on what you prefer as this will take some time. Okay, now go to the folder and drag the prefab called Identity UI into the scene hierarchy. And here you'll find three ID GUIs. Ensure that your webcam resolution is set to 1280 by 720. Since the calibration was done on these values, we'd want to adjust our viewing display to the same resolution as well. Under canvas, I found that changing the render mode to screen space camera works better. Just make sure to drag your main camera to the render camera field. Under quad and webcam texture, change the size to 3 from 2 for both GUI ID and sphere. Let's drag in the prefab into the sequence. ID badge 3 to element 0, ID badge 2 to element 1 and so forth. Do the same for spheres in the same sequence. These correspond to the IDs and how we recorded them in the face data set that we've executed earlier in this tutorial. Set the speed to 100 for the GUI movement animation and set recognition threshold to 0.87. Print out some pictures to use in case there aren't any volunteers. Click play and click load to restore your train data set. If all goes well, you should be able to detect the face and the HUD GUI will initiate and flow towards your detected face. If the layers are overlapping, we can adjust this in the inspector. Really cool, right? So regarding the performance, I wasn't too happy with the recognition accuracy. But this could have been for various reasons. One, I probably used a very small dataset. Two, I used them on paper rather than real people, because I noticed that it works much better at recognizing me than the pages. And three, the model may or may not be optimized for our application. So yeah. Those are my thoughts. 
If you got this working, please share your progress or your project in the comments down below and let me know what ideas that you have that I can build for you in the next video tutorial. Let's take a look again at our progress thus far. Phase 1 and Phase 2 So we have Phase 1 and Phase 2 up and working. We can detect and recognize faces which is pretty cool. However, we can't recognize everyone's faces like from Facebook as this would be a violation of privacy. But right now we have a proof of concept. So for Phase 3, we want to scan for objects and for the AI to tell us what we are looking at. This can be achieved with either a mobile net object detection or a TensorFlow image classifier. Phase 4, this is where things become interesting. We can try and implement voice commands similar to Google Assistant or Alexa to execute a drone strike. <laughs> Just kidding. To scan for objects or scan for faces. Phase 5 is the IoT solution. So this entails switching on and off our IoT devices and giving us visual feedback on our devices if possible. Phase 6 is the Android or Raspberry Pi solution. So having all this power on a gaming PC is really nice but we will eventually need to make it mobile. This may be a bit of a challenge, especially since we're dealing with a low power device. But we'll have to investigate if we can fit all this intelligence that we've built in previous phases and see what features will work and what features may require a compromise. And then phase 7, which is a VR solution or Unreal solution. Once we have it running on mobile devices, we can then turn it into wearable tech. This may be in the form of Google Cardboard with a phone attached to it, or using a much more elegant form factor using the Unreal AR glasses, which may be released anytime now. So yeah, we have a lot of work to do, but let's make it happen. Comment down below if you'd like to share your ideas and we'll implement them in upcoming phases. So phase 1 to 4 will be free on YouTube and phase 5 to 7 will be on my full course called Ultimate AI CP Pro, which is the complete training that teaches you everything you need to know on how to become a pro AI developer in computer vision. And this is where we teach you object detection with YOLO V3, object segmentation using Mouse RCNN, pose estimation using open pose, as well as Android AI development. So there will be a link in the description down below where you can enroll directly into the course. Or if you want to learn more about AI in computer vision, then there will also be a link to a free webinar explaining my top 10 tips to becoming a pro AI practitioner. I'm really excited for the next phase of the prototyping which is going to be on object detection and this is where we'll try and assimilate scenes from the Iron Man movies. Let's see how it goes. Alright, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next lecture.